In today's health alert, respiratory viruses like the flu and COVID, they are still spreading across the U.S. And while many may only experience mild symptoms like fever and coughing, experts warn of a potential increase in heart problems. Our chief health editor, Dr. Partha Nandy, is joining us now to explain why. So people with heart disease, we know they're vulnerable. But uh, what about heart issues in younger adults? Yeah, it's important, right? So when people think of, of you know, heart disease, right, and people who are vulnerable from heart disease, you don't think about complications of the flu or COVID-19. They often think of lung issues like pneumonia or bronchitis, but respiratory infections can also affect the heart. And it's not just older folks. Doctors are seeing heart problems even in younger people in their 20s, right? And there are a couple of reasons for this. When you have a fever, your body temperature rises, and this causes your heart to do what? Beat faster. Dehydration has a similar effect. If you're low on fluids, for example, the amount of fluid, um, amount of blood rather, circulating decreases, and your heart has to work harder to pump that blood through your body. In addition, respiratory infections can cause inflammation. When a virus or anything foreign enters your body, your immune system kicks into action. It sends out these white blood cells to protect and heal the affected areas. However, this inflammation from the flu and COVID can cause plaques in the blood to form clots. And if there's already plaque build up in your heart artery, guess what happens? Inflammation can cause it to become inflamed and then break off. And this could lead to a heart attack. Okay, so how can people limit their risk of heart disease and protect themselves? I'm guessing some of this is obvious. Yeah, you know, heart disease can be tricky because some people may not even know that they have it as they haven't experienced any symptoms yet. But there are ways to lower your risk and reduce the chance of infections causing heart issues. First, you can identify and control cardiovascular risk factors, right? Keep track of simple stuff like your blood pressure, blood sugar levels, body mass index, and total cholesterol, including the good or the HDL cholesterol. Please maintain a healthy diet. Limit your alcohol intake to one drink a day. Don't smoke or vape. Remember, vaping is, is important to look at as well. Exercise regularly, manage stress, and focus on self-care. And know if your family has a history of heart problems. That's, that's also critical. Lastly, get the flu and COVID vaccines. You know, I've been talking about this to reduce the severity of potential infections. It's also important to know the warning signs of a heart attack. And please pay attention here. They include shortness of breath, chest pain or discomfort, cold sweats, lightheadedness, fatigue and pain that can spread to the arms, the back or jaw. However, if you feel unwell and experience signs of a heart attack, get help right away. Call 911 if your symptoms are worsen. And if you have any questions at all, please you know, err on the side of caution. This is especially important if you have an underlying heart condition or have risk factors like having obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, elevated cholesterol, family, heart, family history of heart disease. Never assume it's not serious. So people don't think about, you know, you get these respiratory infections, mm -hmm. how is it going to affect your heart? It can, it can affect your heart and, and make some serious complications even kill you. And, and preventing Ooh. getting that infection in the first place will also go a long way. That's too. the main thing, you know, vaccinations, also wash your hands, Try to try to you know make sure you do some 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 common precautions that we all know about. All right, Dr. Nandy, grateful as always. Thank My you pleasure. For your expertise. Thank you. If you have a health question for the doctor, you can email him, Dr. Nandy at askdrnandy.com, or send it to us on Facebook or Twitter.